to our Ambassador Conversation series. Today, our conversation is with His Excellency Ricardo Morote. He's the Ambassador of Peru to Malaysia. Now, Peru's allure lies not only in its stunning natural beauty, but also in its very rich historical legacy. In recent years, Peru has embraced the global stage, forging very strong links with uh, countries like Malaysia. In this interview, we will uncover the essence of Peru, its vibrant culture, economic dynamism, and also its evolving relationship with Malaysia. Now, to tell us more, welcome to the show, Ricardo. Uh, good morning to all BizTech Asia viewers. Thank you very much, Brian. It is a pleasure to be here at BizTech and to have an the opportunity to talk about Peru, its relationship with Malaysia, and the challenge and economic opportunity that we face in this globalized world. Now, Your Excellency, for a start, let's talk about Peru from a multilateral perspective and how you are engaging the world through various alliances and partnerships. Okay. Uh, Oh, thank you for your question. Allow me to make a few comments to put the relationship between Peru and Malaysia in a comprehensive manner. The relationship between two countries occurs on two levels that are interconnected, multilateral level and bilateral level. At the multilateral level, countries interact to achieve a global governance through the United Nations, where 193 UN member countries, including Peru and Malaysia, address issues such as international peace and security, development, environment, climate change, biodiversity, health, migration, among others, and negotiate international agreements or treaties to make a better world. Then we have the World Trade Organization that deals with the rules and regulations currently governed around 96% uh, of the all world trade. These agreements establish the fundamental legal rules of international trade of its 164 country mem members. There are also, as you mentioned, regional, sub-regional association and trade agreements to take into consideration, such as the Asia Pacific Economic Cooperation, APEC, Association of Southeast Asia Nation, ASEAN, Pacific Alliance, Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, RCEP, and the Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership. The Asia-Pacific Economic uh, Cooperation brings together 21 economies in the Pacific Ring to create opportunity and prosperity for the people of the region, fostering inclusive, sustainable, and innovative economic growth. APIC, as you know, represents 38% of the world population, 48% of the global trade in goods and services, and 62% of the, the whole GDP. Only three countries in Latin America have the privilege to be in part of this forum, Mexico, Chile and Peru. Peru uh, uh, will hold the presidency of APEC Forum in 2024. Therefore, it will be, uh, therefore, it will host the summit where high level meetings of head of states or government group previously host APEC in 2008 and 2016. Uh, ASEAN as you know, aims to accelerate the economic growth and promote regional peace and stability. Peru is not part of the ASEAN, but has request to be considered a developed, developed partner. Also, as a result of the dialogue between Pacific Alliance and ASEAN, a work plan has been developed with emphasizing economy, sustainable uh, sustainable development, education, science and technology, among other topics. And Peru, as rotating president of the Pacific Alliance, is promoting it. Let me tell you something about the Pacific Alliance. The Pacific Alliance 
is an initiative of regional integration formed by Chile, Colombia, Mexico, and Peru with alike views on developed and are free trade promoters with a clear orientation toward the region Asia Pacific. Uh, the Pacific Alliance has a combined population of 270 million persons and per capita have the GDP of 19,000 US dollars and export has reached $627 billion, uh, making the Pacific Alliance the eighth largest exporter uh, in the world and the eighth greatest economy in the world. In Latin America and the Caribbean, this block of countries represent the 38% of the GDP, 50% of the total trade, and attracts around 45% of the foreign direct investment. Uh, we need to work for Malaysia to become an observer state of the Pacific Alliance and hopefully, or finally, a candidate associate uh, to the Pacific Alliance to take advantage of, of, this, uh, uh, of this alliance. Now, also Malaysia, is part of the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership uh, that is a free trade agreement between the 10 countries of ASEAN plus the five uh, uh, free trade agreements uh, partners like uh, Australia, China, Korea, Japan, and New Zealand. And also we have the Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership, CPTPP, also known as TPP-11, that is a free trade agreement between Australia, Brunei, Canada, Chile, Japan, Mexico, New Zealand, Peru, Singapore, Vietnam, and Malaysia, which joined on November 29, 2022. The CPTPP removes 95% of the tariffs between the, these 11 members, in turn providing Malaysian businessmen uh, with a much greater access to new markets such as such a Canada, Mexico, and Peru, which are not covered by the existing free trade agreements that have uh, Malaysia. Finally, I think uh, we uh, must take into consideration that the international sense is being reconfigured reconfigurated with the shift of power towards Asia Pacific with China in the center. The current situation is marked by the competition of global hegemony between the United States and China, which compete with two different, poli two different political, economical, social, and cultural models. Now, at the bilateral level, uh, we have to take in into consideration that the intensity of the relationship with other countries occurs concentrically. What it means? That first, with the border countries, with those in the region and other regions which, uh, with which uh, we have a political and an economic affinity, and of course, with the, these two superpowers, China and the United States. Peru, as you know, is a middle income country with 33 million inhabitants located in South America, uh, more than 19,000 kilometers from Malaysia. That is a challenge that we must to address to reduce the transportation costs and communication. Peru has a territory of 1.28 million kilo uh, square kilometers with 3,080 kilometers of coastline in the Pacific Ocean. Uh, it has three well-defined uh, geographic areas, the coast that represent 12% of the territory, the Andes or mountains uh, that represent 28%, and something very important, uh, we have the Pacific, the, the Amazon jungle or rainforest that represents 60% of 60% of territory that is uh, 
that is very important in the biodiversity. Due to our geography, Peru has different climates and it makes it a mega diverse. Peru as, and Malaysia are a mega diverse country and we are uh, working together in, in, to tackle all the problems uh, uh, with the jungle because we have uh, Malaysia have the Borneo jungle as well. Peru, as you mentioned, is also cradle of some of the oldest civilization uh, of the humanity. The best known is the Inca civilization flourished uh, in Peru between the 1400s and 1533. Uh, about the economy, Peru's strong macroeconomic and institutional policy frameworks together with the structural reforms, including to foreign uh, investment have contributed to a strong economic growth over the last two decades until 2019. This result in the country experiencing one of the strongest macroeconomic performance in Latin America, helping the country mitigate economic and social consequences of major shocks in the recent years. After the significant uh, economic downturn due to COVID-19 pandemic, the, the economy bounced back quickly, but since slow down amid the lower global growth related to Russia war to Ukraine, the increased political uncertainty, the high inflation, tight financial conditions, extreme weather conditions, but high metal prices have supported the Peruvian economy that is projected to grow this year 1.1% and gradually pick up uh, around 2.7% next year. The government efforts to reduce, uh, uh, the government efforts to relaunch infrastructure investment and several announced public-private partnership projects will support investment. Tourists and copper production are expected to recover and boost export. The inflation is expected to continue a slowing down and reach a range between one to 3% in early uh, 2024. Uh, risks associated with higher global financial conditions are mitigated by the large currency reserve and low public debt that have Peru, and the financial sector remains resilient amid well-capitalized banks with large liquidity, liquidity buffer. Uh, Peru means partners, the traded partners are uh, China with 33%, uh, USA with uh, 30%, Europe uh, 50%. But I would like to point out that the the main tra traders in in a regional uh, manner is Asia with 46%, uh, America, North America and South America is around 30%, and Europe 50%. So we are more focused in the uh, in the Asia Pacific uh, region. Our main export uh, by sector uh, is uh, uh, is uh, we are very good in, in the mining sector. So the mining sector contribute to the GDP sixty percent. We ex we are exporting copper. We are gold, silver, zinc, lead, coal, and gas. Uh, Peru, Chile are uh, the first and second large producers of copper. And in gold, zinc, lead, and silver, we are in the top 10 in the whole world. Uh, also now we are, in, uh, we are taking some uh, measures to, to boost our agricultural sector that produce or contribute 12% of the GDP. And we are exporting avocado, fresh uh, grapes, fresh tangerines, coffee, maca, quinoa. Uh, by the way, uh, we are uh, thinking that next year we will have 
vegan avocados here in Malaysia. Also, we are exporting 11% uh, of, of our exporters are uh, textiles. Uh, nevertheless, uh, we have a, because we have a large coastline and our, our sea is very rich, we are the world leading producer of fish, fish meal that is very good for uh, for the farms, aqua squid and prawns. Now about the commerce uh, with Malaysia, the it's not much, but the the trade exchange between Peru and Malaysia in two thousand and twenty two was around three hundred and ninety three million American dollars with a favorable balance uh, for Malaysia of uh, 122 uh, million. Peru export to Malaysia, uh, copper, zinc, minerals, concentrates, calcium phosphates, cocoa, coffee, prawns, blueberries, fresh grapes, and fruits. Peru imports from Malaysia, fertilizers, essence, uh, and concentrates, rubber gloves, processors, controllers, integrate uh, circuits, ovens, some players, uh, vegetable fats and oil. The, with the entry of into force of the CPTPP, there is a good room to, for trade and investment to grow in the coming years. Uh, likewise, uh, with the entry into operation in November 2024, the port of Chiangkai, located 80 kilometers north of Lima, where the port of Callao is, uh, uh, it will increase our exports and generate new commercial opportunities with Asia Pacific region. I have to point out that these $3.6 million that have invested in this port is a, is a private a private investment from Peru, it's Volcano from that have I think uh, sixty percent of the investment, and Costco that uh, as you know is one of the a Chinese uh, company that have ninety percent of the management of the containers. Uh, I believe that uh, I think that Peru in the near future will become a commercial power because it will be the first logistic center in South America, Pacific, in South America, uh, that will redistribute the cargo of the countries of Chile, Ecuador, and Colombia, and also could boost uh, cross-border shipments from Brazil, Bolivia, and Argentina, especially, 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 especially in commodities such as soya beans and minerals. I, ha uh, I have to mention that uh, last year, uh, Malaysia the foreign trade and industry uh, minister uh, that, that took uh, Lim Bang Ho uh, uh, visit Peru, accompanied by uh, by a senior official of MIDA and Madrid uh, to to make a, a, some prospective business with Peru, uh, be a partner in, in, in commerce and investment. He held working meetings with the Peruvian Vice Minister of Foreign Trade and Vice Minister for the Economy, uh, representatives of the main business associations like uh, Association of Exporters, Chamber of Commerce of Lima, National Society of Industries and Business Executive. The Malaysian Deputy Minister of International Trade Industry said to me that is interested in five things. One, to promote halal certification in our country. To this end, he requests to promote the participation of our business community in the annual trade fair, uh, Malaysia International uh, Halal Showcase, uh, that is Mijas. Likewise, greater participation of Malaysian companies was needed in the Expo Alimentaria that takes place in Lima September each, each year. Second, office in Malaysia by the Peruvian private sector. So 
uh, that they can establish uh, alliance, strategic alliance with the Malaysian businessmen to export their business, to expand their business in the in Malaysia and other countries of ASEAN. So the idea is to make a hub, commercial hub here. Establish a distribution and marketing center. This is their one. Establish a distribution and marketing center in Malaysia by the Peruvian copper, gold, and silver mining companies. He announced that he could uh, send a delegation from MIDA to explain the facilities that the government of Malaysia can offer to the Ministry of Energy and Mines and the Peruvian mining uh, companies. Uh, also, uh, we have in mind that, uh, to install a binational and investment contribute the, sec the execution of joint, uh, especially in infrastructure in Peru. Uh, this committee will uh, will be made up of representatives of the main business chambers and unions taken into consideration that the memorandum of understanding that have been signed by these uh, private entities, especially uh, one signed by the, uh, by the Chamber of Commerce of Lima and the Malaysia Chambers of International Commerce and Industry in 2017. Uh, and also, I think that uh, it's uh, important for both government to install a commercial office in Kuala Lumpur and Lima to support the agreements that will be reached at the Binational Trade and Investment Committee. Well, finally, I would like to summarize the trade and investment opportunities for Malaysian entrepreneurs in Peru within the framework of, of the CPTPP. It seems uh, the following opportunities in trade. Import food products and beverage, especially fresh, fresh uh, citrus, grapes, blueberries, uh, which already has access to the Malaysian market. Likewise, Peru, some Peruvian foods have high demand, such as quinoa and maca, and such as inchi that already are in the Malaysian market. Uh, I think the uh, the next battle that we are in the final stage of uh, to obtain the certification to to import and and very important uh, to to import fish meal. Uh, and aquaculture. And also the imports from some, uh, for, a, for the electric and electronic industries, some uh, minerals like copper, silver, and maybe in the near future, lithium opportunities. Taking advantage of the facilities provided by the Peruvian government to promote public, uh, public and private uh, partnership, According to the Malaysian investment capabilities, it is recommended to follow with uh, investment in telecommunications projects, especially for mobile broad, broadband system with uh, 4G and 5G that uh, is very well developed here in Malaysia, in logistic platform for the management of public ports, except for the port of Callao, such as the port community system that you have, uh, projects related uh, to the management of solid waste and health established health establishment and and, uh, and road projects. That is the overview about uh, the relationship of between Peru and Malaysia in a in a pro comprehensive manner. So back to you, Brian. Now, Ricardo, thank you very much for sharing. Uh, starting off with the multilateral relationships uh, that Peru has, and then drilling down to the bilateral partnerships with Malaysia, 
and also uh, sharing with us the opportunities that exist for not only Peru to partner with uh, countries like Malaysia in ASEAN, but also opportunities for Malaysian companies to then invest or participate and partner with Peruvian companies in Peru itself. Now, thank you very much for sharing that with us. Um, before you, we leave, any final thoughts you'd like to leave the audience with? Uh, well, the, 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 first, uh, the first thing that I have to tell you that uh, we have a great opportunities to, to, make, uh, to make our economies grow with a good partnership. The, one of the main problems is that we don't know each other. That's why we, uh, I am promoting to, to a businessman uh, here to Malaysia to see uh, the opportunities that we have here. Uh, uh, we think more in, in Singapore, but I, I already told them that now is, is the time to, to make uh, Malaysia, a hub of the of, for commerce to distribute all the products in all ASEAN countries in Southeast Asia and also maybe to export to other countries like China. But that is the challenge, and we have to to be very focused on what are we doing. And as uh, as the um, as the Deputy Minister of International Trade uh, and Industry told. Agree that we need to to uh, to open in a regional route to foster the growth in the commercial. Ricardo, thank you very much for taking your time to be on the show. Thank you uh, so much, Brian. Thank you for all your audience, and I hope that in the next meeting that we have, we could go more focus in in the stock exchange that we are also, uh, there are many companies, mining companies uh, uh, in the stock exchange, not only in Peru, also in, in New Zurich, that they are. Now, we've been speaking to His Excellency Ricardo Morote, the ambassador of Peru to Malaysia. I'm Brian Fernandez, and you've been watching and listening to Vistac's Ambassador Conversation Show. This interview will be on our website, www.vistac.asia as well as our syndication partners, TV stations, radio stations, and websites. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Thank you so much, Brian.